This video is the 2016 higher level DCG question B2 and it's an orthographic projection question that also includes conics. The image on the right shows a hotel located beside the River Shannon in Limerick. Uh, two views of an architectural model of a similar structure are shown in the 3D graphics below. The outline projections of the structure are given in figure B2. The plan is based on a, um, an ellipse reflecting the city's rugby tradition. The top of the structure is parabolic, as indicated by the curve ABC in the elevation. B is the vertex of the parabola. One side of the structure has been shaped to produce a flat, vertical surface as shown. Part A of this question is to draw the given plan and elevation of the structure. Part B is project an end view in the direction of arrow E. And part C, an architectural feature in the form of a steel band is to be constructed around the outside of the structure as shown in the 3D graphics. VT and HT are the traces of an inclined cutting plane used to define the position of the shape of the steel band to determine the true shape of the intersection between the structure of this inclined cutting plane. Note it's not necessary to show the steel band in either the plan or the elevation, only the true shape is required. This is a scale of 1 is to 100. This is quite a wordy question, as all conics questions tend to be, but what it's asking is quite straightforward. You're asked to draw an elevation plan in in view, and then you're asked to draw the true shape of uh, the solid after it's been cut by um, the traces VT and HT. This is quite a large question, so when you're setting it up on a page, especially if it's an A3 page, you need to be careful of the measurements that you're using. Um, we're given a total height, uh, including the elevation and plan. So 9 meters plus 14 plus uh, the 4 is 27 meters tall. At scale is 1 to 100, that's 27 centimeters, which is almost the height of our um, A3 page. So just keep an eye on that uh, when you're setting up your question. So what I have here is I've started my uh, question. I'm going to set up um, the plan and elevation first based on the measurements that are given. So we are told uh, that the VTH or uh, HT uh, is down 9 meters below the XY line. So that is down here. And I'm going to find the center line for my parabola. And for the ellipse for the entire shape, this is going to be my central axis. Down one and a half meters for the top, six meters then for the rest for the minor axis. Halfway along that is where I'll find the major, which we are told at the top of the question is 10 meters long. And the straight edge is two meters in from the side. So we're up 14 meters from the XY line to the bottom of the parabola. So this here is point A, point B is up on this line somewhere, and point C, uh, I haven't brought up yet. This is point C here, and point B is an additional four meters above the, uh, above the line for AC. So that's point B up here at the very top. So as you can see, it's quite a large question, pretty much covering the entire um, width of the page, or height of the page. So just going to find the last few bits now um, before I can start setting this, uh, start working on this question properly, and that's the vertical trace. And that's VT. What I'm going to start with first is the parabola up on top. We're told that the total width from A to C here is 10 meters and that its height is 4 meters. I'm going to use the rectangle method to draw the parabola. 
as we've done in other questions, and I'm going to divide it up into the same number of equal parts. So I've got 5 here that needs to be divided up, and 4 here. So I'm going to divide it up into 5 equal parts. So across the bottom, that's sections of 10. And up the side, this is sections of 8. Labeling my points starting at point A as 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, and 1, 2, 3, and 4 heading towards the axis. These points down here that are away from, um, so this is the axis of the parabola, and that axis cuts this bottom line. So if it's cut by the bottom line, or the line that the axis cuts, uh, you go parallel to the axis, and then the other points here will join to the vertex. Zero, one, two, three, and four. Plot the best curve that I can. That goes through all points. Gonna copy this now onto the opposite side. So line four, line three, this is four, three, two. So our point two is on this side. That's point two, point three is here, and point four. And that's the parabola drawn on the top in the elevation. So I can complete the elevation, the darkening in my sides, and the base of it. So that's the elevation. Now looking at the plan. So the plan is based on an ellipse with major axis of uh, 10 meters and the minor axis of 6 meters. What I'm going to use here is I'm going to use the trammel method. You can use your auxiliary circles method um, or any other method that you have, but I'm using the trammel just because it's going to keep construction to a minimum down here at the bottom. So setting up the trammel, mark a point on towards the end of my trammel and put that at the end of the major axis and call that point A. Where the major and the minor cross each other, that's another point on my trammel, I'm going to call that point C. And then the final piece is putting point A again onto the end of the minor axis and where the major and minor cross again, that's point B. So what we can do now is point B is going to move over and back across the major axis, point C is going to move up and down on the minor axis, and I can plot my points, then I just mark off different points on point A as it moves around. Now we can stop here, we don't need to go the rest of the way down um, as the, it, the object isn't there. And one final piece of it then. So you can just put a point outside that 2 mil and then that will find the exact point as where one crosses over And that completes the plan.
Now, next part of this question is uh, part B, which is project an end view in the direction of arrow E. So arrow E is looking in from the left hand side, which means our end view is going to go up here on the right. And I'm going to take this point here as the outside edge of it. So I'm going to bring all my points over to here and then project them up. So all points over to there. And then I can take my points up at 45 degrees. This just gives me a bit of space between um, the elevation and the end view. Checking my lines all the way up along here. And this is the central axis. Have that going up along there also. So that's the very outside with the wide part of it. It comes to its widest point up at the very top. So the whole way up along the side of this here is a dark line. Reason being, it's at its widest point down here, and as it's coming up, it's a parabola going that way. So the widest part of it is up there, and it is flat across the top. Now what we need to figure out is the curve here for our parabola, or what the ellipse and the parabola interest, uh, that shape looks like up here. Uh, I'm just going to find the hidden details. So at the back of this we've got two points, two vertical lines that we can't see. They're hidden detail. So I can put them into this now also. And the height that they go at is the height of this here. So hidden detail. And as that's a straight edge going across the top, or across this part, that's also a hidden detail straight edge up here. Okay, so next part of this is we need to locate the curve of the ellipse in the end view. So it's not going to be an ellipse or a parabola, so what we're going to do is we need to find points, plot points on it, the same way we would at junior cycle when a cylinder is cut by a sloping surface. I have a couple of points already here on my parabola. This point, this point, and this point. So I have four of them. So it would be useful if we continue to use them again down um, over here, just so it's less lines and it's a little bit easier. So point one, it's a specific distance in from this side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take point one, find that down in plan, and that gives me two points on the curve, point here and here. So I now know that at this height, this is basically just a line drawn on the top surface of that, and that's how wide it is at that point. I'm going to do the same thing from two. So this is two, this is one. So this is another line drawn on the top surface and I can see how wide it is um, there. Point three, the same, and point four. So three and four. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take each point in turn and uh, locate them up here in the end view. So point A, that's the lowest point. That's this one down here. It's located on the center line, so it's along the central axis here somewhere. And I'm gonna bring across point A. That is point A there. Next, I'm gonna do the same thing for point one. So it's at that height, and point one can be located 
projecting over into the end view. So, point one there. And this is it on the other side. Doing the same thing for point two. Point two is at this height, so that's the height that this hidden detail line is at. Can project this from the plan into the end view. So it's if I have a point in two views, I can find it in the third one. That's what we're doing here. So that's this point, and following that line up, that's this point here. Two and two. Same thing for point three. and point four it will be much the same, it'll be fairly wide. So following point four. And you can probably get away without point four as it's pretty much in the same position as it's not adding much to it. This is three and four here. So joining these up. And that gives me the curve there. There is a curve on the back, uh, this one here, it's hidden detail. But as this is symmetrical, and they're both uh, along the central axis, the hidden detail line is actually coming down along this way behind the, the visible curve, so we don't need to worry anymore about that one. So just recap here on what I've done. Taken points um, from this point here, located that same point down in plan. Once I have it in two views, I can then locate that point in uh, the third view. Okay, the final part of this question is to draw uh, the true shape when it is cut by uh, that plane, that inclined plane. So before we can do that, we need to locate the plane in the end view. So our plane is inclined this way in uh, the plan and in the elevation, going like that. So we need to find an edge view of it and we see the edge view of it here in the end view. A trace is uh, where a line or is the line of intersection between two planes. This plane, this time, is the inclined plane, and the horizontal trace is for the horizontal plane. That means that it is on the xy line. So this point here is an edge view of HT, horizontal trace. Finding um, the vertical trace in the elevation. So we've brought all our lines across to this point up at 45 degrees and then up. So this here is an edge view. This line would be equivalent to an edge view um, of our of our horizontal, um, of our vertical plane. So I can bring that across until it touches off this point here, and that's an edge view of VT. So horizontal trace is on our XY line, which is also the in plan of, um, an edge view of the vertical trace. So I can bring that across until it touches all the other lines that we're bringing up at 45 degrees. It's on a point, so it can't move 45 up along here. This is VT, so it's at the same height as VT is up here. And then this line here is my uh, plane, the inclined cutting plane. So let's draw our auxiliary view. So we're going to be taking lines perpendicular um, to our horizontal trace. 
So this is one point, so we're looking at points of where it cuts through the plane. This is the center, and this point here is where it comes out on the other side. And I'm going to use this to find a suitable place to put my x1, y1 line. So x1, y1. They're the widest parts of it. These lines are going to just project out along this way. Now a few other points that we're going to take out, and that's also um, clear points on the outside of it. So that's the hidden de two hidden detail lines uh, on either side here. Okay. Now with our when we're always drawing an auxiliary view, um, we're working from this view, skipping this view, measuring from our previous view. So the previous view in this case is the plan. What we need to look out for, normally we're measuring from our XY line down, because usually for an auxiliary um, plan, we would be it would be coming from our elevation. This is not coming from our elevation, it's coming from our end view. So kind of, um, so end view or end elevation. So our XY line where we're measuring from is going to be in a different position. It's going to be along this line here. So if we were to take a, our, our object here sitting in the corner of a room, this is one wall this way, floor down underneath it, and then you have the other wall sitting here. So we need to measure from this line, which would be kind of a, an additional x, y line, um, between the auxiliary vertical plane and the horizontal plane. So we're measuring between our auxiliary vertical plane here and the horizontal plane on the ground. So we need to measure our distance back this way. So taking each of those points, um, we'll find the center, back to this point. So we're measuring from here back to the center. That gives me this point here, that's the center. Again, measuring from here up to point A. From on the very widest parts. So they're going to be on this line here. here so they're all in line with each other and as it so happens that is the same distance that this is out along here so this is the oblique plane when this cuts it that was centered correctly is a circle. So now we just need to locate the uh, two additional points. So where they cut through here and here. Cut through here and here. gives me the bottom edge of that down here. So in darkening you can use your compass or carefully trace around it. And that is the true shape of the cut surface. So this is the 2016 higher level question B2.